The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard it were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could not do any deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villagers teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over their unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Please have a seat. In our gospel reading, we continue our journey through Mark. Mark being the gospel that we work our way through for this year of the lectionary. We need to remember that Mark began his gospel with this statement, this is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So he sets out this bold statement that this Jesus is the Son of God. And he then goes on in the story that he tells to support that claim. It's widely believed these days that the, what Mark wrote is the account uh, related to him by Peter. And so what we read here, while under the hand of Mark, is the recollection and experiences of Peter. We've heard in the past uh, weeks about Jesus doing things and getting people thinking. Do you recall the stilling of the storm where Jesus was asleep in the boat, the disciples in fear of their lives wake him up saying, Lord, don't you care that we're about to die? And Jesus stills the storm and we see a shift in the fear of the disciples from the storm to Jesus. And they say this phrase that keeps on coming up in Mark's Gospel, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? There's this question, who is this Jesus? Who is he? And in today's Gospel, we hear him coming to his hometown. Now, when you come to your hometown and ask the question, who's this? Well, we all know who he is. He's Jesus, the carpenter's son. We know him. But that knowledge becomes a stumbling block. For as they hear his teaching and hear of all that he has done, 
they, they're wondering, they're questioning is, no, where does he get all this from? We know who he is. He's the brother of James and Joe's. His sisters are here. We know his mum. We know who he is. That's their answer. And as a result, Jesus can do nothing. And so we get an insight into that which enables the power of the kingdom of God to be available in people's lives. There is a need for belief. There's a need for faith. And the people of Nazareth were not open to that. Indeed, in contrast to what they have to say, and Jesus was amazed at their unbelief, and this is in contrast to his reaction to the disciples as they woke him up those weeks before at the end of the storm. Uh, and after he had stilled the storm, do you remember what Jesus said? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? There is this critical need for faith. What is this faith that we talk of? Well, in the letter to, I think it's the Hebrews, it says, Faith is the confidence of things unseen, the certainty of things yet to come. So faith is always about the future, that which is yet to come. It's not about today. We live by faith as we move into the future. And we live by faith not in that which is seen, but in that which is unseen. The residents of Nazareth could see Jesus. We know who you are. We've experienced you for years and years. But there is another dimension to Jesus that they were not open to. And so he then, having taught his disciples for many weeks. He then starts doing the second phase of a good educational program. You've heard me, you've seen me do things, now what's necessary? You go and have a go. And he sends them out, not by themselves, but in pairs, two by two. He sends and on this occasion, it's just the 12. On another occasion, we hear of him sending out the 72. But here, it's just the 12. And they go out with nothing. How would you be if I said, right, today we're going on a missionary journey. Just come with what you've got. Anybody comfortable with that? We'd probably all say, oh, no, i <laughs> I've got things to do, and what are we going to do for money? And, but remember, we've just been talking about faith. Faith is about that which is not seen. How am I going to be provided for? God will provide. And as they went out, their needs were provided for. They didn't want for anything, even though they had nothing of their own apart from a staff to rely on. So they go out doing what Jesus has done. They've seen the master do this over a number of weeks and now it's their turn to go out and they are putting their faith not in what they can do but in Jesus and his command that he will be with them, that he will help them. And so wherever they go, they cast out many demons and anoint with oil many who were sick and cured them. Now we don't hear the results any further, their reaction and their feedback to Jesus until two weeks time. In our gospel next week, 
uh, this chapter has an interlude where we hear of the death of John the Baptist. So these events are happening at the time when John the Baptist is in prison and about to be executed. So the ministry of the kingdom is going out. And so they are also told that if any place will not welcome them and refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake the dust off your feet. Now that's a fairly strong image. Don't take anything of theirs with you, not even their dust. Now that's fairly strong stuff, isn't it? When we go, you didn't want us, well, we will not take anything of you with us, not even your dust. And it's a witness against them of this rejection. And keep in mind that this is happening within the setting where Jesus has been to his hometown. Sometimes in life, it can be difficult to appreciate and understand uh, those who we are familiar with. Have you ever been surprised by the achievements of your kids? I certainly have. Uh, they continue to surprise and impress me. And so, as we hear of this rejection of Jesus by his family. Let's think about family life and the challenges that happen there about helping people to be who they are rather than who we would like them to be. I know it's something that I experienced in my life uh, when I uh, felt God's call to ministry. I gave up a, a good government job uh, I was working in the Kimberley in Western Australia and we left there to travel to Melbourne uh, where I did my theological studies and my mum would write a letter each week and she had a lot of difficulty coming to terms with the idea that her boy who she thought should be in agriculture was leaving that to go into ministry in the church despite the fact that she was a very devout lady. And she would, on one occasion, send me one of her weekly letters with an ad for a potato farm in the Lockyer Valley and the note, this looks interesting. It took her many years, but she, after several years, came around and says, maybe this is the place you need to be. May we be a people who support and encourage that path that our children, our grandchildren take. It may not be the one that we expect for them, but it is nonetheless, if they're honouring God and seeking God's guidance, the path that he would have for them. And may we be surprised and encouraged by all that they are able to achieve. We give thanks to God for the witness of the gospel today. May it continue to be fruit for us to reflect on. And may we go out in the power and confidence of the commission that Jesus continues to give his church to go into the world bearing the good news of Christ to all. And now to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might majesty, dominion and power, this day and forevermore. Amen.